Hey guys, Drew Brashler with DBB Audio. Today I wanted to show you how to get the XWSG card from Waves for the X32 and M32 set up with multi-rack to be able to send all 32 channels into SoundGrid and then back out to the board. And that way we can have all 32 inputs on the back of the board going to multi-rack and then coming back and showing up on all of our faders on the board. So let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit the routing button. And we are going to go to our inputs right here. Now this is the inputs for the faders. Now we can s basically select these in blocks of eight. So on inputs one through eight, we're actually going to take this knob and scroll all the way down to card one through eight and then press connect. And then inputs nine through 16, we're going to take this all the way down to nine through 16. 17 through 24, and 25 through 32. So what this basically means is that our faders and channels on the board are going to be pulling their inputs from the card itself. Now let's go ahead and tab over to the card out. Now this is the important thing here, is we're gonna actually select all of these to be from local one through eight, nine through 16, 17 through 24, or 25 through 32. Now if you are using the uh, digital snakes for the Behringer X32 or Midas M32, you want to select the inputs from your stage box to be what's feeding your card. So to do that, if we were having our inputs from the AES 50, we'd actually go AES 50 A 1 through 8, 9 through 16, 17 through 24, 25 through 32. But we're going to be using our inputs on the back of the board here, so we're going to leave those on local. Now that we have all 32 channels from the board going into multi-rack, we want to go to multi-rack and assign 32 new racks to accept the channels and then output those 32 channels back to the board in the routing inside of SoundGrid. The one thing that I love about doing this routing is that it applies our multi-rack to all 32 channels. Now the one downside of this is that any of your monitor sends are going to be post multi-rack. So they will be getting all the processing that's happening from multi-rack. So if you are using in-ears, you just need to be cautious about the latency that you're going to be adding with any of the plugins that you're using. The last downside is that any of the console EQ, dynamics, low cut is going to be post multi-rack. So if you want to do any sort of low cut or EQ, you'll want to do that inside of multi-rack and that way you can have those uh, EQ settings applied before you do some uh, fancy compression with some great compressors and whatnot. The other benefit of this setup, it is the easiest setup that you can do. There's no additional routing that you have to do. There's no inserts. There's no need to worry about time delay between between adding an insert on a channel. This is probably the best way of using multi-rack because we have all 32 channels that are inputting on our board, going to multi-rack, coming back to our board, so we can really get some awesome configurations going with this way. Now there are some other configurations out there, so make sure you watch my other videos that I have on configuring the routing for the XWSG card. Thank you so much.